coding family welcome back to my channel coding with amanda chalk well i'm amanda chalk i'm a coder i'm an editor i'm a ccsp through ahima i'm a mentor i'm a coach and i'm your girl for all things medical coding so listen we're gonna go ahead and start this vlog out the right way this week um i'm gonna take you through my day for a couple days maybe two or three through two or three days today is tuesday tuesday yay and we're just gonna go along with me through my day as a medical coder and a medical auditor. So you know I'm gonna be dropping those gems along the way. I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna be giving you that drip uh, whenever I see some mistakes. Uh, so you won't make the same mistakes. So you guys, I am really here to serve the people, okay? And I really wanna make you become elite medical coders. I'm teaching you E&M, you know, I'm teaching you the tips and tricks of an auditor okay i'm teaching you what i see so you won't make these mistakes so i'm just giving you all these free gems so you should just let me okay so just stay tuned and we're gonna see what we can get into today all right what's up youtube so listen so i'm out here getting my last 15 minutes on cardio is a very very important part of my day working out is a very important part of my day like the mind can only achieve what the mind can believe okay the mind can only achieve what the mind can believe and so when i'm out here and i'm i'm working out you know it's because i believe in myself so believe in yourself you too believe in yourself beautiful coding family you can do it if you have a goal you know go for it but i'm actually able to go so hard with my coding because I have all this endurance, baby, to keep going, okay? So, I just wanted to show y'all what I do. Your girl be getting it. But I'm just saying, all right, on to the next clip. All right, you guys. So, it's now Tuesday afternoon, and I'm done with my 9 to 5. So, um, I'm getting ready to code some charts. So, I got 25 charts to code today which I'm going to go ahead and knock those out. Should take me about 25 charts. I'm going to say that's going to take me about two hours. Between 1.5 and two hours, depending on what it is. I'm looking at my workload right now, and it looks like I have some pretty easy things in my queue. So once you, you know, become very seasoned, you can actually look at your queue and tell if you're going to have a bad or a good night as far as coding is concerned. Like, so if I was to look at my queue and I would see a whole bunch of like ERs in my queue, I'd be like, oh my God, a whole bunch of ERs. Because when you have a lot of ERs, ERs mean EKGs, they mean infusions, they mean injections, they mean hydration therapy, um, they mean all that stuff normally. Because when, what happens when somebody goes to the emergency department? They're not going for fun, right? Normally, if you're going to an emergency department, like you got a problem, like your stomach is hurting so bad, or you got some chest pain going on, like it's something serious um, whenever you flying out to the emergency room. So whenever I see a lot of ERs, I know those most in most cases are going to be something very time consuming to me. Okay, you guys, so I have something really important that I want to tell y'all. Like, I'm just dropping these gems on y'all today. But you really need to know this type of stuff. So, listen, because I am a coder and I am an auditor, I can see both sides of a story, okay? And since I'm a coder and I've been a coder for a very long time, I understand, like, it's hard sometimes to get audits. And especially when you're a newbie and you're starting out and somebody is just dinging, 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 dinging you for stuff that you're doing wrong, you know? And sometimes that happens when you're new to a facility. You're not quite used to, like, that guideline. You're just not used to that way of coding. Like, that can happen. Like, when I came to the, to the government, right, it's a whole different system. It's not the same as coding in the outside world. Believe it or not, it's, it's really not. They, they are their own little beast, okay? And that is why they have their own guidelines. They have their own guidelines called the VHA coding guidelines. So I will never ever, you know, again, leave the federal government unless I'm starting my own company to be a contractor myself. That's the only way, okay? But anyway, you know, whenever you are getting your audits, try to remain 
you know, open-minded about them. But don't let anybody, like, play you when you know something is wrong, okay? And how you can win your audits, okay? We call them rebuttals. When you are rebutting an audit, you, when you are rebutting your audit and rebutting something on the audit, that's saying that, hey, you know, I know you documented that, but I don't agree with you, okay? And it's okay to not agree. And actually, the best coders I know, they disagree with me, okay? That's when I know I got a bomb coder because they disagree with me. Somebody that just lets it ride all the time and don't never they don't even rebut the audit. They don't do nothing like crickets. Like they that's not really a good coder. Good coders actually disagree. That's one thing I know for sure, for certain. Okay. And so whenever you are rebutting somebody, I always present the facts to the auditor. Okay, because this is a factual game. This is a game of facts. This is not a game of fiction. Okay, and so if you can present a rule, a guideline from the book, you know, then it's nothing that they can say about it. That's the reason why I should have been a lawyer instead of a coder. Okay, that's what my husband tells me all the time because I will prosecute something. Okay, but anyway, back to what I was saying, you do need to present the facts. Okay, and I like to show people like I'm a very visual type of person. And so I had an auditor come back and tell me that I had coded a COVID-19 lab incorrectly. Okay, and so I'm like, really, I coded it incorrectly, but I did the research for that. So I don't know about that. So what I did was, you know, show her the wording in the CPT book. Okay, and what all was included for that particular panel. I pointed that out. I always point things out, okay? And then I actually pulled up the lab report and did use my snipping tool and put the lab report beside the wording in the CPT book. And I said, hey, you know, the code that you're saying I should have used, it doesn't include all these tests that's on the report. However, the code that I told you does, okay? So, you know, I had to go ahead and show her that and point it out, you know, point out what was missing okay if i had to use her code and it was actually several tests that would have been missing that were documented on the report if i had to use her code okay and so i had did extensive research on it because it was new covid 19 is new so of course the covid 19 lab is going to be new so that was that wasn't the panel that i was used to coding so i had to go out and do the research as a coder, you will be doing a lot of research. And especially when you have all these new diseases and disorders coming about, you'll have new code sets, you'll, know, you'll have no idea what you're doing. Okay, period. And being a new coder, you don't, you have the time when you come in, like some of the stuff is going to be real foreign to you. And so you're going to have to research it. But that's a good thing. Okay. When you have to do your own leg work, that's a good thing. I call that, you know, that's what coders are supposed to do. And that's what I love doing. That's actually a good quality of a coder is that they do extensive research. You know, do research that matters, though. Don't waste your time on stuff that don't matter. All right. But anywho, yeah. So I had to just prove my point, you know, that way with the facts. Okay. So what I'm trying to say, my, my point is always be factual when you are rebutting something. Don't come, don't, because one thing I can't, I, one thing that irritates me is when a coder comes back to me with a, with a stupid rebuttal, okay? That don't make no sense. Where, where, where are you saying, you know? So show me something, like, where do you see that at, you know? And so if you can't show me where you see that at, then uh-uh, negative, ding, ding, okay? So whenever you are, whenever you are coming with your stuff, come with your stuff and have the facts. Have your ICD-10 book, have that guideline, point to it in the book, and show them, hey, no, I'm coding it this way because it says right here, chapter 4, number 3A, period, okay? So that's just a tip, you know. You can win, honey, if you just present the facts. Now, on to the next one. Okay, you guys, so here's a good one. So the provider documents open angle glaucoma, okay? And the coder... In this instance, coded H40.1130, which is primary open angle glaucoma bilateral. 
okay so this is what i was trying to tell you guys about the importance of words and in this field words really matter actually one word matters okay and in this instance the provider did not document the word primary okay the and also the provider did not document bilateral these these things matter a great deal uh, when you're coding anything with the eyes so the appropriate code in this case would be h40.10xo which is unspecified open angle glaucoma stage unspecified okay so what you would do uh was look up glaucoma and then you would look up the word open angle this person probably looked up glaucoma looked up um open angle primary which the provider didn't document primary so you can't code things that you don't see so that's a good one good one so i had to share it okay so in the outpatient setting we can never code anything that is iffy if the provider says it's uncertain maybe it's possible it's probable any of those iffy type of things outpatient coders cannot code them now in the inpatient setting it's slightly different that's why you know the inpatient and the outpatient rules are different from each other and the coders like normally get confused um, when they cross over because things are just not the same okay so listen so in this particular instance the provider documents the Corbin's or first dorsal 10 centibitis all right so notice the word or okay he's leaving a choice it's either this or it's this okay it's one of them well, dude, which one is it? Okay, so as a coder, if you see something like that, you absolutely cannot code that uh, because you don't know which one he's talking about. So this is a good opportunity for a legitimate query. Dr. Brown, Dr. Reed, Dr. Jackson, on your line, in your assessment and plan, you documented these two things and you said, or which one does the patient really have? Okay, and so you can always query when it's legitimate, but never query for anything stupid. But dude, we are not psychic. So in this instance, I would definitely query. And this coder went ahead and coded the decorbance. But how can you do that when the provider is saying, or do you really know which one he ha the patient has? But I'm just saying, okay. So I thought that was a good thing for me to share with you guys. You know, never code anything that is iffy if you are an outpatient coder. Now, on to the next clip. Y'all like that drip? I'm sure you do. On to the next one. Okay, so here's a good one. So, this person has coded a new patient visit. So, if you look in your CPT books, okay, and go to the evaluation and management section of the book, um, you will find the definition of a new patient, okay? See that there? Okay, so... Quickly, I'm just going to read this to you guys real quick. And it says a new patient is one who has not received any professional services from the physician slash qualified healthcare professional or another physician qualified healthcare professional of the exact same specialty and subspecialty who belongs to the same group practice within the past three years. Three is the magic number. So this particular coder here has coded a new patient. However, on the documentation at the beginning of the note, it says patient here for follow-up. Okay, clue, 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 patient here for a follow-up, okay? It doesn't say this patient is coming here as a new patient or this patient is here to be established. It tells you specifically the patient is here for a follow-up. So why in the world would you code a new patient? That is a rookie mistake, okay? Being a coder is all about the documentation. It's the reason why we get paid so well is to just read, all right? If this person hadn't been paying attention, she would have seen that if she had just read the beginning of the note. It says that this is a follow-up visit, okay? So that means it's an established patient, okay? So now she could have just, she should have just, if she was unsure, she should have just flipped back in her note, flip, flip back in her notes to see, you know, when was the last time the person actually got seen. But I wouldn't even did that if I seen that the doctor says it's, it's a follow-up, okay? So, you guys, please, like, I'm trying to tell you these things to prevent you from making these rookie mistakes. Now, on to the next one. Jesus, take the wheel. What up, YouTube? Late nights, early mornings. That's what I do. 
But listen, I'm up again doing my little cardio, getting my walk on. An hour a day will keep the fat girl away. Okay, so um, that's what I believe in. I believe in working the body. All right, so that's what I'm out here doing. Time waits for no man. And in order to be great, I believe that you have to be mentally and physically great. Okay, so I'm out just showing y'all what I do. Boom, 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 boom. Hello, you guys. So it's the morning. It's actually Thursday morning and I'm here. I just came back from outside and I just got off of the line um, doing a team meeting because we have a team meeting every single morning. That's how we start our day uh, in the division that I work in. And so it's nothing interesting that's going to happen at this point because I'm just coding. I'm just coding. I'm just doing what I do. But um Coding to me, it comes like clockwork and I could code charts in my sleep, literally. Okay, so I probably won't have anything to say because it's, it's nothing to say. I'm just doing my job. All right. So I'll see you guys later this afternoon when I start auditing and maybe I'll find a few interesting cases. I don't know. All right, you guys. So see you this afternoon. Bye. Okay, y'all. So it's Friday and this is going to be my very last one for this week's vlog. And I'm going to wrap it on up. Okay, listen. So this is a good one. And this is a definite nugget that you need to know. So in this case, the coder code, the coder did not code rather, um, a, a, a ICD-10 code. And I'm going to count it as an error, as a missing code, because the provider documented that the patient had uh, a CBA with hemiparesis okay so the, the the provider also documented that the patient had uh aphasia okay so she she coded the aphasia uh but she failed to to code the hemiparesis and she probably failed to code the hemiparesis uh because this icd-10 guideline is a little tough and i always have to refer back to my book whenever i come across uh this particular documentation here okay so anyway whenever a person has a stroke or a cba normally they have sequelae or they have after effects of the stroke okay so maybe they're paralyzed on one side which you know that could, that's what really hemiparesis is hemiplegia you know maybe they have um aphasia maybe they have speech problems you know all kinds of things um can happen after the person has a stroke so um you can really look that up by looking up the word in your ICD-10 book, sequelae. Let's see. Look up the word sequelae, which is S-E-Q-U-E-L-A-E. -E, and then look up stroke. And all those terms after that, after that word, are things that can happen after the person has a stroke. So they can have an alteration in sensation, aphasia, apraxia, ataxia, cognitive defects, everything after that word stroke under sequelae could uh could actually happen to a patient after they have a cba but anyway in this particular instance the coder failed to code the hemi um parisis, okay now she probably failed to code that because sometimes we get a little lazy and we don't want to look in our book all right so you can't just code you can't just look that up and say okay uh i don't see well hemiparesis hemiplegia same thing okay so it will be i6935 so she probably looked up stroke and then she went down to um, hemiplegia and she didn't want to follow through. So what I mean by she didn't want to follow through is you can't code in this instance if you don't know two things. The first thing you have to know is if it is the left side of the body or the right side of the body. The second thing you have to know is if it is dominant or non-dominant. Now, unfortunately, on the second half of that, Dominant or non-dominant providers normally do not document that, okay? I'm just going to tell you. You're going to go looking for it, and you probably won't see it, okay? Because they, they normally don't document it. Why? I don't know, because it's actually an ICD-10 guideline that says it should be documented, okay? So, if it's not documented, the ICD-10 book tells you what to do. It says, uh, for amb ambidextrous patients, the default should be dominant okay if the if the left side is affected the default is non-dominant if the right side is affected the default is dominant okay so if the provider doesn't document dominant or non-dominant and you know it's the left side then it's going to be classified automatically as non-dominant if it is the right side and they don't document dominant or non-dominant it's going to automatically be classified as 
dominant, okay? So the OCD 10 book tells you what to do. So anyhow, that is a stickler of a guideline and most people get tricked up on it and I actually count a lot of errors for that. Um, but it's very simple. If you just look in your OCD 10 book, um, you will see chapter six in the guidelines and it's gonna be under A, okay? So anywho, you guys, that's gonna wrap up this week's uh, session, um, this week's vlog. I hope you got something out of this video. I dropped several nuggets for y'all to let y'all know what not to do. And the last one probably was the best nugget of all, okay? Because most people just fail to pay attention to that guideline, but you definitely need to. So anyhow, if you want to be a lead coder, just keep following my channel and I promise you, you will be the best at what you do because I do pride myself at being very good, okay? I'm very good, very well, okay? So, anywho, I hope you guys have an amazing weekend. I got work to do. I can't even I can't even rest. I got work to do. So, what I'm going to do tonight is I'm going to code 50 charts and do a couple audits. And then I'm going to hit the sack, get up, work out, and start all over again um, and do some more audits, okay? So, anywho, you guys, thank you so much for subscribing to my channel. If you like me, go ahead and do me a huge, huge favor right now, right now. Smash that subscribe button, okay? And I'll be back later on. Gonna do an E&M video for you guys so we can learn some more calculator. And um, I'll probably do another another video too as well. Um, just, to, just, just, just because, you know, I like to, my freelance videos, I like them a lot because I can just be me, okay? When I'm teaching y'all something on my E&M videos, I can't, I can't be really funny on those or anything like that because I'm very serious when I'm teaching, okay? So, all right, you guys, have a blessed and amazing day. If you like me, subscribe. Bye, you guys.